Hey everyone, happy Tuesday and welcome back to another video. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different from what we normally talk about. Most of my videos cover inventory and inventory management. Um, and today's video is going to be looking at something a little broader and that is uh, the Catsnip viewer. Um, Catsnip is my viewer of choice and I talk a lot about it in, uh, especially in the wardrobe group. Uh, I am um, a very active member of sort of the support team for Catsnip as well. And so uh, I use it every day um, as my primary viewer. And I always tell people that, you know, that I use it and uh, that I think it's the best viewer for people who spend a lot of time focusing on their inventory uh, and uh, shopping and things like that. And, um, and so I want to start a kind of do a quick overview of why I use Catsnip and what it is and how it maybe differs a little bit from, from Firestorm, especially since it's the most popular viewer. Uh, and really all of this is leading up to uh, some videos I'm going to be doing probably later this week uh, as we get ready to get a new version of Catsnip coming out. So we'll take a look at some of the beta features that are coming up, which really makes Catsnip um, very, very separate and very unique from pretty much every viewer out there in terms of, of shopping and making that very easy. Anyway, uh, so for those of you who um, may be watching this because you're more interested in Catsnip and not so much in my standard videos which are about um, inventory management and shopping and stuff generally, um, you know, welcome and I hope you enjoy it. Um, Yes, I, I am, am a boy in real life, and yes, I am a girl in Second Life, so uh, hopefully that doesn't bother anyone, but um, uh, I do want to talk about this because I think it's important um, to um, kind of preface where Catsnip is today, and that before we get in and talk more about um, the beta features that are coming out and will be available in the next release. So. Uh, that's kind of a long introduction, but uh, we'll go ahead and, and start taking a look at this. Now, uh, I'm very much of the opinion that that your choice of viewer is really down to what you like. Um, uh, in my opinion, every viewer is more or less exactly the same. And what I mean by that is that they all provide access to all of the core functionality that makes up Second Life. So if you're using the Linen Lab Viewer or Firestorm or Catsnip or any of them, you're going to be able to get into World, you're going to be able to look around, you're going to be able to have chat and inventory and all of that stuff. So they're all basically the same. Uh, in fact, most viewers are mostly the Linden Lab code. Um, and most of them don't differ if you look at you know a raw percentage of, of what's available. Don't differ all that much from the Linden Lab. Linden Lab code. Uh, now the advantage of having such uh, a rich, and, and it's maybe not as rich as it used to be, but it's still a very rich third-party developer environment is that each one of the viewers takes on its own kind of separate niche, its, its own separate role. Uh, Firestorm is obviously sort of, um, and I kind of think of it as every man's viewer. I mean, it's got a lot of features in it. It gives you lots and lots of options. It's meant to provide access to um, everything in lots of different ways. Um, my phone always rings during a video. Um, uh, lots of different access to things. Uh, there's a viewer called Black Dragon. And Black Dragon's main goal is to just look amazing and to give you lots and lots of graphic options for photographs. Um, and, and then there's Catsnip. And Catsnip is, um, is very much uh, a standard um, Linden Lab viewer. Um, you know, it's got all, all the same sort of user interface uh, to it, but it provides just enough additions to that, um, I think, to, to separate it out and give it its own little kind of area. And, and one of those areas that I think Catsnip really shines in is our ability to work with inventory and to make shopping just a really, a whole lot easier experience. Um, and so we're going to look at some of these things today and just kind of poke around in the viewer a little bit. Um, as you can see on my screen, this is how I have mine set up. I, I don't use a lot of toolbars. Um, I tend to click uh, or use keystrokes um, to get to the places that I need to go. 
otherwise I want to mostly just have sort of the, the view um, of the world around me without having a lot of toolbar buttons and things in the way. Uh, when I'm not actively chatting, I generally close the chat window so I don't see it again. A lot of what I do is either focused on the avatars in world or on the landscapes and the decorating in world. And we're actually in my garden right now uh, at my parcel. So um, yeah, so I, I mean, I just like to be able to see all of this stuff. Uh, and so that's how my view is set up. Um, the, this viewer, though, is um, is more or less, uh, if you look at the user interface, uh, a, a pretty much, like I said, a clone of what's in the Linden Lab viewer. Um, and so if you're used to that, uh, or really any viewer, uh, you'll be used to this. Um, you know, it's got the, the standard me menu with all the stuff up there. Um, it does have RLV built into it. Uh, the developer of Catsnip is also the developer of RLVA, uh, and so this is sort of the spec viewer for that RLV protocol. It's the same one that uh, Firestorm uses, uh, but Catsnip is actually the sort of the, the source viewer for this, not Firestorm. Um, although it's in both. Um, but, but most of these menus, most of this functionality is exactly what you would find in the Linden viewer. Um, and with R11, uh, which came out last year, um, or maybe earlier this year, I think it was last year, um, um, you know, it was up to date with it at that time. And when we get to release 12 here in the next uh, little bit, um, it'll be up, up to date again. Uh, this R11 viewer is Bento compatible. Um, so this came out right around the time that Bento was available. So this is a full Bento viewer and is updated with all the stuff that was available around then. A uh, couple things, though, that I really want to focus in on today because these are the things I think that make um, Catsnip a little bit different, um, maybe from other viewers. So the one button I do have is down here in the lower right-hand corner of my screen. And if I right-click here on that and go to Toolbar Buttons, um, you can see it a little bit easier right here. It's uh, the Quick Preferences button. Now, this is a relatively recent addition to Catsnip. And I know that Firestorm has had their quick preferences for quite a while. Um, this is a new floater that pops up. And it's got uh, a few things in it which I think are really nice. Um, so the first tab that we have here is the sort of the people tab. And this is how you can control things like your hover height right from here. Uh, this shows you your current avatar complexity. So this is my avatar complexity. Uh, there's nobody around, but this would show you the number of people that can see me out of the total number of people available. And this is the check mark for those who don't like to get the notification when your complexity changes. You can uncheck this here to tell it to not show those if you don't want to. Uh, this is my complexity limit for others, currently 80,000. Uh, number of impositors is 16. Catsnip does allow you two options for always rendering. You can always render your friends, and you can always render avatars nearby, 20 meters or less. Uh, I usually have this one off and leave it just on friends, but it um, depends on where I'm at. But it's super easy to get in here. This friends option is now something that's added to the default Linden viewer. It's a slightly different implementation um, than what we have here in Catsnip now, but this is something that should be filtering out to most viewers pretty soon. And then there's just some other stuff here about complexity as well. Uh, so the second tab up here is a little shirt, and this is basically just everything that I'm wearing and really quick access to it. But the thing that I really like, and again, this is one of those features that makes Catsnip so kind of useful for people who are into inventory and dressing, is not only can I get my overall complexity here, but I can come over here and I can see what the complexity is of each of the items that I'm wearing. And my, my one sort of uh, guilty pleasure in terms of... Um, complexity are my eyes. I'm still using these older Mayfly eyes, uh, but they've got this really bright blue, and um, I haven't been able to find other eyes that have a lower complexity that um, are as bright blue, and I'm kind of hesitant to change them at this point, <laughs> uh, but I'm sure I will eventually get around to changing them. But uh, this is really nice to be able to go in here and, and put a whole bunch of things on and then say, oh, okay, well, that one necklace I just put on or that pair of shoes or that hair that I put on has an extremely high complexity to it. Uh, so beyond my eyes, you can see that my, my mesh head is next and then these uh, shorts are next and then my body, etc. So um, you get everything here. 
uh, listed and you get that complexity number which is really nice. Okay, so this last, uh, this third one here is, is reserved for something in the future. Uh, the last one though is environment settings and this is how I can come in here and I can, um, I can check um, my wind light and I can change it to different settings um, and I can adjust the angle of the sun etc and um, etc so it's I mean it's just a quick way of getting into doing some of these things it's not quite as full featured as one in Firestorm but it works really well and has most of the common stuff that you'll need um, but again you know I think that's the the one thing that you'll see um, as we go through this video and, and I think this is an important differentiation um, where Firestorm is meant to be a viewer, like I call it sort of the everyman's viewer, it's meant to have and give access to all of those features and all of those options. Um, you know, if you look at the, the quick preferences floater in Firestorm, almost every one of those options are just core functionalities that are available in every single Linden Lab viewer. Uh, what Firestorm has done is they've given them a user interface, um, and that's great. Um, and, and Catsnip though is is is, is different. Uh, it is not a Firestorm clone. We get lots and lots of questions. Can you add this? Can you add that? And um, and and the whole sort of point with Catsnip is to is to not be just another Firestorm called Catsnip. Um, you know, the idea is to present a unique set of features uh, designed around. I, I don't really want to call it a minimalist approach, but it's not intended to have every possible feature enabled in user in in the UI. Uh, it is meant to give a nice set of features, a nice set of functionality, and then let people you know do what they can with it uh, beyond sort of the basics. Uh, so this is a quick preferences floater. Like I said, it's a relatively new addition. It works really great, um, and especially with the avatar complexity stuff, it's nice to have that all right there. Uh, okay, so the next thing I want to look at is inventory because I think inventory is um, where a lot of sort of the nice stuff in Catsnip exists. So here's mine, um, and it's kind of a little bit of a mess right now. I guess it's time to do another wardrobe video to um, get caught up. Uh, but there's a couple of things in here that, that I want to show that I think are um, really super nice features of Catsnip. Uh, so one of the things if you work in inventory a lot that happens is you're in a whole bunch of different folders, you're looking for stuff to res out, you're looking for things to wear, and over time you end up with all of these different folders opened and it's just this gigantic huge tree of folders and it's a big mess. Now all viewers have an ability to collapse the folders down uh, and when they do that what you end up with is something that looks like this. When you click the collapse button, it basically closes every folder down and you're ending up like this and you gotta kinda go back in there and start again and start fresh. Um, but Catsnip does it a little bit differently and this is such a minor thing, but I think it makes a huge impact in terms of usability and I wish every viewer did this. Um, but this button down here at the bottom is the collapse button and it's not actually truly collapse. It actually is called close all folders. And maybe other viewers do this as well, like I said, I'm most familiar with Catsnip. But when I click on this, rather than collapsing everything down like this, what I get is just all my folders closed. I can see everything and I can immediately go back into what I need to do. So if I'm in here and I've got all of these folders open up and, and so on, and I'm in, in here and I just click on this, boom, it just closes them all down and gets them out of the way. And that's really, really nice. Um, so. Another feature, and I believe this one is actually in um, Firestorm and, and probably in a lot of other viewers as well. I'm going to go ahead and ri just right click on myself and go into my appearance here. Um, so if I'm in here looking at what I'm wearing, uh, and I think maybe this is not in the, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a feature that I use all the time. I, I don't know how many viewers it's in. Um, but if I'm in here, and uh, I, I know we've all probably experienced this if you have a mesh body. Uh, where you teleport somewhere and your mesh body is sort of all cracked and it doesn't completely res or part of it reses. Uh, one of the fastest ways to fix that is just to take your body off and put it back on. Um, and so when you're in 
your appearance loader or your right click on yourself, you can always come into these things here and right click and choose find original. And find original will actually jump into your inventory and find that item for you. And when you have like that mat, that broken mesh body, um, you can you know quickly detach it and and add it back in again. Um, and and like I said, that like pretty much always fixes that problem if it occurs for you. Uh, so there's that that find original feature, which I think is 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 really nice. Um, now a feature that uh, that's also available. Uh, and this is one that originally uh, sort of pre-mesh body back when we had standard size mesh. Well, we still do have standard size mesh, I just don't use it as much. Um, but one of the features that really, really, really sold me on Catsnip is the ability to detach items. Uh, and I think this might be unique to Catsnip. Like I said, I, I, don't, I haven't looked a, a ton around, but I think it might be. Uh, and so let's say I, um, I'll kind of zoom in here. See, I, see I've got these earrings on. Right, I got one on that side and one on that side. Two earrings makes sense. Um, and you could think of this, uh, you know, as wearing a pair of earrings or wearing a standard size mesh top with an alpha layer underneath it, or anything where you have more than one item inside of a single folder. Uh, it could be a complete outfit. It could be a pair of bracelets. It could be, you know, like I said, mesh and, and an alpha uh, shoes and a shoe base, whatever it happens to be. So if I'm in here and I right click on my item. I can do the same thing for my appearance floor, but I'll just do it in world here. I right click. Most viewers have a detach option. So if I wanted to detach both earrings, I would have to go to each one and choose detach. But because they're in the same folder, I get this second option here called detach folder. And so I've got my two earrings on right now. If I right click and choose detach folder, it's actually gonna remove both. Uh, and like I said, this was a huge deal to me um, back when we had um, when I wore standard size mesh all the time because you always had your shirt and the alpha that went underneath it and being able to um, remove both with a single click was hugely awesome it's kind of like the uh, auto hide feature of the Lara body now um, or of the mesh bodies in general now uh, so detach all is another kind of nice feature that you have and I still use it a bunch when I have like I said multiple earrings things like that that exist in the same folder uh, all right so the next thing and this is something that's gonna see a little bit more of a change when we get to looking at the beta later this week um, but so the next thing I want to show you is the ability to open up new inventory windows um, so in my uh, videos most of the time for compatibility's sake um, and making sure it's easily accessible, I talk about opening up a second inventory window by using Control Shift I, which opens up a brand new inventory window right up at the top, and you can start digging your way through it. But when I'm organizing my inventory, most of the time I'm putting things into my RLV folder because that's what works with um, wardrobe, and most of the time I'm I'm filing clothing away, so it goes into my wearables folder. So one of the nice features of Catsnip is if I want to, I can just right click on this folder and I can choose open folder in a new tab, which will put it up here at the top. So here's my custom tab and I've got that open. I can close that. Or I can right click on this and say open folder in a new window. And then not only do I get this new inventory window, but it's already set up right there in my inventory. Uh, so again, it's not a huge difference, um, but it is kind of a nice little feature, and we're going to talk more about this uh, later this week when we get in and look at filters. Because um, right now, if you look at filters inside of Catsnip, they're very similar to what you see in pretty much every viewer, uh, times and dates and object types, and this is going to get a nice overhaul coming up really soon. Um, so nice, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see it uh, mirrored in other viewers. So. Uh, I look forward to kind of showing that off to people. Um, so yeah, I mean, th I, there's nothing really fancy about going through and doing this, and I just wanted to provide this video as a baseline uh, for some of the discussions that we'll be looking at and some of the changes we'll be looking at uh, with the uh, R12 release uh, betas that are just starting to come out right now. Uh, so I'm really excited to um, do some videos covering cat snips. Like I said, this is my primary viewer. It's what I use 
more or less every day. Um, people often ask me uh, what viewers I use, and I use Catsnip for about, um, I don't know, maybe 99% of my work. Uh, maybe maybe 90% of the time I'm in the world, and the other 10% of the time I'm actually on the Linden Viewer. I tend to install the project viewers and release candidate viewers uh, as they become available from Linden Lab, and then I um, that way I get a chance to see all the new features that are coming out and comment on them and make sure that they work. Um, and I encourage everybody to to take a look at those viewers that come out from Linden Lab and try them out. Because uh, the more comments that they get uh, earlier on, the better those viewers will be. And if you recall at the beginning of this video, I said you know, most viewers in Second Life, Firestorm included, are mostly based off of that Linden Lab code. So the better it is, the better tested it is coming out of the Linden Lab beta cycle, the better it will be for those third party viewers as well. Uh, the more people who use it, the more bugs they'll catch, etc. etc. So this is um, just a quick look around. Uh, my current parcel right now, which I've had a lot of fun decorating, and it's a never-ending process. I seem to be changing something on it every single day, um, which is a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, so this has just been a quick look at the Catsnip Viewer, and um, I encourage people who might be interested in trying something new, or maybe if you're on Firestorm um, and um, you want to try out um, you know, maybe it's not working as good for you uh, as it might, or you're just looking at what's available. Catsnip is a great alternative viewer to take a look at. Uh, again, you know, I think the most important thing when it comes to viewer choice is that it works well for you. Uh, it works well on your machine. You're comfortable using it. Um, and really, at the end of the day, like I said, they all allow us to do uh, exactly the same thing, which is enjoy the virtual world. Um, so this has been just a quick overview look at Catsnip and some of the features I think in Catsnip that are um, kind of nice and special and um, and really to me at least separated out from from other viewers and I'm sure there are probably some that I miss but those are the sort of the big ones that I like a lot as well. Well thanks for watching and look forward to doing a couple of other videos at least one maybe two other videos later this week uh, covering the new functionality that will be out in the beta uh, and release very soon. So until then, take care.